<laughs> well, Shirley, you're still an enthusiastic weightlifter to this day, and I didn't wonder because you used your muscle power to lift your family out of a needy existence to a better life, although sadly your first marriage failed, and yeah. these days you find yourself passing on keep fit tips to various people. And if you look at that screen, here's one of them taking her favorite exercise, singing star Anita Harris. And now, weightlifting star oh. Anita Harold. Oh, thank you. But I dare say there's something Anita and, uh, and a great many more of your present day wrestling fans may not know. And that is Big Daddy was once in the Coldstream Guards. In fact, you were called up on the 7th of June 1949 and get the train from Halifax to Catrum, where with all the other new recruits you fall in for your first inspection parade and get this cutting comment on your appearance. Now listen here, Goldilocks. Get your hair cut. <laughs> As a new recruit on that day 30 years ago, and he's here to greet you for the first time since your army days, former guardsman Robert Robinson. Hello. Robert, how do you how do you mean Goldilocks? <laughs> well, it's 30 years ago, but in those days he had a mop of blonde curls. True. That is until he got his first army haircut. Yeah. We're shorter than that. Yeah. <laughs> And we've kept <laughs> I haven't seen him since. <laughs> but like a great many others are fan. Thank you. Thank you, Robert Thank Robinson. Robert. Thank you. Dimov, you and your two brothers start to get professional wrestling bouts at four or sometimes a generous five pounds a booking. But in those days you appeared on the wrestling bills under a different name. That's when you paraded in the ring with the title the Battling Guardsman. <laughs> Former European middleweight champion, here he comes, you say, one of the great names in wrestling, Mick McMahon. <laughs> Big Daddy was the, the battling guardsman, was he? He certainly was. I remember he used to come in the ring with the, the bear skin, you know, the big busby and his tunic and the swaggered cane and he used to march up the... <laughs> we have a picture to show it. But, uh... <laughs> but Mick, since he, changed, since he changed his name to Big Daddy, uh, the ex-guardsman here makes use of a secret weapon, yeah? Oh, the old belly button. Yeah. <laughs> I remember once we were doing some publicity stuff, you know, at, um, I think it was at Crystal Palace, and uh, there were some cameramen there, and there were various ring crew pods, and uh, one of them said, um, that belly butt you do, uh, what's it like, you know, how does it feel, you see? So, uh, Daddy sort of took a step and went, <laughs> And the fella shot away and, and sat down and, and, and Daddy stepped and went, ask a silly bloody question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess he might be up to something, so I... Was only a bit <laughs> well, now, in the summer months in those days, when wrestling bookings were not so plentiful, you use your swimming skills to get a job as a lifeguard at Blackpool. Now, at the end of every day, the town hall sends an official to take your report. And you could bet the most amazing reports would always come from lifeguard Shirley Crabtree. <laughs> he heard some of those reports because he was a lifeguard with you at Blackpool 24 years ago. Someone who went on to become a British Olympic swimming coach, Hamilton Smith. Hamilton, uh, what was so amazing about uh, Shirley's reports? Well, the more pompous the official was who came to take these reports, the more mischievous Shirley's reports became. And uh, the official would say, now, uh, what happened today, Shirley? So Shirley would say, well, Hamilton and I have saved um, three redheads, four blondes, 16 brunettes, three dogs, cat, and Dumbo the donkey. <laughs> But seriously, I mean, he was a very, very popular person indeed on the beach. People came from all over Lancashire and Yorkshire onto the beach just to see him. A really great fella. Thank, Thank you. you, Hamilton Smith. Now, Max, at one time you were also a lifeguard at Blackpool, and there was one summer when his end of the day report was no joke. Yes, that's right, Eamon. Um, Shirley and I used to get lumbered every Sunday. We're doing the Central Pier at Blackpool in the middle of the season. And on this particular occasion, some of the holiday makers who was on the far end of the jetty, which is quite a long way out, alerted us that there was somebody in difficulty about 100 yards further out in the sea, which is quite a long way out because the tide was well in. And uh, Shirley, who was a wonderful swimmer, took to the water and did a wonderful job. He went out and saved that, which I found later was a young lady. Marvellous. And here's an extract, in fact, from a local newspaper report of that rescue 23 years ago. And as it said, Shirley, you uh, got that girl just in time. Hundreds of holidaymakers cheered you as you got her to the beach. She was taken to hospital where, thanks to your action, she recovered and was taken back to her home in Cheshire. Yes. And I haven't seen him from that day to this. But we found her, the girl whose life you saved 23 years ago, Barbara Burkett. Thank you. Hello, darling. Hey. Hey. You know Barbara, you, you have a special reason for being surprised when we found you. Yes, I have, Eamon. Uh, even though Big Dad is a television star, I didn't know it was the same person who saved me 23 years ago. Thank you. I can always remember that I said to you, I said, look, darling, whatever you do, don't grab me. <laughs> Freezing cold, and I'm thinking, my God, I haven't got to go in today. <laughs> and you was calling from the end of the pier there, and you was well out in the water, and I thought, my God, I hope she doesn't grab hold of me. <laughs> but uh, I was glad you and I took hold and I fetched you back to the show. And if you recall, we got a wonderful plaque, didn't we? Yeah. The end of the <laughs> and we got another one now. Thank God you. Early from being the youngster with a funny name on a Halifax back street, you've muscled your way to the top in a tough business. And uh, Big Haystacks here was helping me. Do you find him tough in the ring? <laughs> well, I found him, Eamon, to be my toughest opponent. He uh, asks no quarters, he gives no quarters. And when that bell goes, there's war. <laughs> Well, it's a tough business, but uh, Eunice, you tell me how tough is he? Outside the ring, no way. He's just a big, gentle giant, and he's a heart of gold. Thank you. Well, there's one family in particular who would agree with Eunice there, and a mum and dad who used to take their little girl along with them to your wrestling matches, and one day when you were on a bill in Derby, the little girl's father asked to see you and told you his daughter was going to hospital for a life-or-death operation for a brain tumour. And when our daughter opened her eyes after that four-hour operation, she couldn't have had a better surprise than a present from Big Daddy. From their home in Codner, Derbyshire, the parents of that little girl, Ron and Maureen Froggart. Hello, darling. How are you? Thank you. 
So, Ron, what did your daughter Kerry find? Well, not only she'd got a get well card from her hero, Big Daddy, but he'd sent her some money to get some uh, chocolates. And the surprise on her face, you know, we knew that she'd got the will to live again. And Maureen, he sent your daughter more cards all the time she was in hospital. Yes, he did. And uh, when she recovered, we took her to see Big Daddy again. And uh, he announced to the audience that he uh, had got a very brave little girl in the audience that he'd like them to see. And he took her into the ring and presented her with a bouquet of flowers. Four years after that very serious operation, she's here, Kerry Proggett. <laughs> Shirley Crabtree, Big Daddy, and this is your life. God bless. My pleasure.